West Ham's January failure has left their season at risk of collapse. F.R.F. David Sullivan, F.R.F. David Gold. That is how West Ham fans feel after a January transfer window full of disappointment. For a club that has never played in the Champions League, sitting one point off of fourth place in the Premier League at the start of February should be a time for excitement and optimism. But West Ham fans are furious. The January transfer window closed on Monday night in the club, desperate for reinforcements to help their push for the top four in Europa League glory, signed nobody. There was no striker to offer back up to Michel Antonio, the club's only recognized forward, no move for Jesse Lingard, no centre-back, no midfielder to ease the burden on Declan Rice and Tomas Sausek. Nobody. What promised to be a historic season is now at risk of collapse and any chance to disrupt the Premier League's big six and establish themselves as a force again in English football looks to be in tatters, all because they didn't get their checkbook out. And the moves West Ham did try to make were laughable. Whether they were attempts to save face and make the recruitment department look competent or genuine bids we will never know. Two weeks before the window closed there was a £50 million offer put in for Leeds United's Calvin Phillips. When you think Newcastle spent £25 million on Joe Willock last summer then £50 million for Leeds' key player and an England regular was fanciful. Perhaps more outrageous was their reported bid for Rafinha. West Ham may have improved drastically in recent seasons, but it's naive to think they could have landed the Brazilian, who will have the pick of Europe's elite in the summer. There was also a last-minute bid to sign Benfica's £45 million rated striker Darwin Nunez on Sunday as the club scrambled. But the logistics of that deal always made it difficult to get done. Nunez was in Uruguay ahead of his national team's World Cup qualifier with Venezuela. But he's on the radar of European giants, and Benfica are still in the Champions League so, why would West Ham's hierarchy think he'd pick them? Antonio not only needs backup, but West Ham need more quality in attack. He has only scored two Premier League goals since October 24, and looks like a player who has been shoehorned into his role as a striker when things are not going well. In a desperate last-ditch attempt at landing a new forward, West Ham made a bid for Atalanta's Duvin Zapata on deadline day, but time was running away from them, and the window shut before any concrete progress could be made. There were links throughout January to the likes of Blackburn's Jalean sensation Ben Brereton Diaz, Hugo Ekadik of Reims and Jonathan David from Lille. Now 909 days have passed since they last signed a striker, an outrageous statistic given their lack of depth in that position. Then there appeared to be a home run with Lingard. He joined West Ham at the same time last year and flourished under Moyes, scoring nine goals and providing five assists in 16 appearances. Out of contract in the summer, there was definitely a deal to be struck with Man United. They played hardball with Newcastle over a £12 million relegation fee, but if West Ham really wanted the 29-year-old then he'd be in East London by now. Moyes also ruled out moves for the likes of Liverpool defender Nat Phillips, while a move for Marseille's Duge Coletta Carr was based on the French side being willing to accept a loan. They didn't. If there is one person that must be feeling deflated it's Moyes. He led the club impeccably in the last two seasons, but when he needed backing from those above him, he was left on his own. It felt like the team's recent performance under Moyes had papered over the cracks, but now the fury at owners David Sullivan and David Gold, as well as vice chair Karen Brady, is back. Tensions between the supporters and the owners have been running high for quite some time. Protests against their failings as owners, from a lack of ambition to the move away from Upton Park, have frequently taken place in recent years. A quick flick through social media will show the frustration fans are feeling. Well done for ruining our chances of Europe next season. You are not fit enough to run the football club is the gist of their anger. Moyes, Gold, Sullivan, Brady disgraceful transfer window. Be ashamed that the world-class football stadium won't be hosting European nights soon. Shambolic and shameful. We are in a great position in the league and Europe to really push on with the second part of the season with a couple of new faces but no, F off Gold, Sullivan and Brady. No ambition. I wish Gold, Sullivan. Brady and even Moy is nothing but sleepless nights tossing and turning realizing how much they have ruined our season right now. Also taking much of the blame is Rob Newman, appointed as head of recruitment from Manchester City in October. He has had the best part of three months to identify targets and pull the trigger on deals. But nothing was done. There was also more cause for optimism going into this window because of Czech billionaire Daniel Kratinsky's purchase of 27% of the club back in November. The deal 
which valued West Ham at around £600 million, reduces Sullivan's stake from 51.5% to 38.8 and Gold's from 35.1% to 25.1. It was claimed his investment would be used to reduce the club's long-term debt and fund other key areas of focuses, one of which was thought to include spending on the squad and their bid to continue their progress. But no funds were forthcoming from above, and the most concerning thing about their lack of business is that West Ham's season could now implode. Liverpool, Chelsea and Manchester City already appear out of sight, while Tottenham are on the up under Antonio Conte, Arsenal are finding their feet with Mikel Arteta and you can never count Manchester United out, as dysfunctional as the club is. Long term, if West Ham do miss out on the top four, then more problems will arrive, because it becomes highly likely that Declan Rice will be off in the summer. Gerard Bowen is also attracting glances from bigger clubs, and Tomas Sausek is at an age where he will consider his options. Who knows how many first-team regulars will move on with no European football on offer. From genuinely competing for a top-four spot to having your squad gutted of its best players in the space of eight months would be a catastrophe. Moyes has already pulled off a miracle to get West Ham into this position. Now he needs to conjure up another to keep all of his hard work intact.